Let's continue from our previous day video tutorial wherein we output the name of our application which we have registered at some developer dashboard. So this is the name of our application. Okay. So now that we have connected to our some platform using the some SDK, let's send our first payload. Well, payload is nothing but transaction template which we send to some platform. Okay. Transaction template is called payload. So this is the transaction template. For now, let me leave it empty. I'll take another constant and I'll name it payload. Now, a child thread has been created here, which awaits, which waits for the result to be returned. So let me grab the SDK instance dot. We have a property called payload. Let me select that and a method called create. So this create method takes two argument. The first argument being the transaction template itself. And the second argument is a Boolean that is true or false. Uh, if you pass true to it, it will return error in case there are any error. If you write false, it won't return any error messages. In production, sometimes you might want to use false here. Okay, so we could start filling our transaction template here. Before that, let me output the value which we receive from this payload create method, which is present inside constant payload. So now this transaction template is like invoice. So what will you have inside an invoice? A minimum of what kind of invoice it is and where the payment has to be sent, right? Those are the two minimum things and maybe the amount. Even if the amount has been left blank to your client to fill it, the two minimum things, bare minimum things which an invoice need is what kind of invoice it is and the destination address for the payment. So let us fill that and also know that a payment sent to the some platform should be should be formatted as per XRP ledger transactions specifications. OK, the document which includes all these specifications is present in the description section of this YouTube video. Now the destination key, remember all these are case sensitive and should be, should be present as it is, as I'm showing you here, because I have seen the specification documents and I'm writing it as per the specification. So the destination D should be capital. This in my case, I'll just uh, pass in XRP address. This is my XRP address. Remember, we need to have it inside quotes because it's considered as string. So that's it. Bare minimum things present inside a transaction template or technically we can call it as a payload. Usually a payload sent to the some platform will be signed by the end user, for example, for sign in request, subscription, payments, etc. For this tutorial, you will be the initiator and the end user. Either you sign it or reject the payload, okay? Also note that the transaction template we have or the payload we have here doesn't include the amount to be paid, right? In that case, the end user will be able to edit or enter the amount himself or herself after opening the sign in request, okay? So let's execute this script. So the first thing, UUID, if you are using this for your application, you could use this directly or else Grab this URL, this is signing in URL itself. Let me open that inside a browser, which has the QR code so that the end user can open the sum app and scan this QR code and make a payment. So this is our application, my super duper app, and it's waiting for the payment. So this section has, the first one has the QR code in PNG format. Let me open that too. You could just embed that inside your application for the user to make the payment. And the next thing is the JSON file which has all the information which is encoded in the PNG file. This is 
as you can see the Q here, you could replace it with M or H to get medium or high quality image. And this is WebSocket URL. Pushed is false because this is the first time someone is getting this sign-in request. He or she must sign sign it before we could our application could send a push notification okay now let me open my app uh, i was not able to screencast this so i'm just holding my friend's phone in one hand and trying to shoot this so i don't think it's a problem because you need to follow along this tutorial and do this stuff for yourself i'm just showing all these things as an indicator for you okay so let me open up the app the same thing in my browser let me clip click this scan icon and hold it against this qr code present on my desktop so it will quickly grab the information present inside this qr code so pay attention that's it it opened the qr code has been opened inside some application so now uh, let me show you my device here so so it doesn't have the amount because we have not specified it in the payload right so end user can enter the amount himself or herself accept it or else click on this close button I am looking through the camera so grabbing that close button is kind of tricky here okay click on this you could either close or decline this let me choose to decline this transaction and the sign sign request has been rejected okay that's one thing you could do you could accept the sign request or else you could reject it i wanted to show you both the possibilities so i just rejected it so let me open up my code editor so let me fill some more things inside this transaction template let us input the amount to be paid so if you specify this amount explicitly, user won't be able to edit it, okay? So one more thing to note here, one XRP is equal to one million drops. That means if you enclose this one million inside this quotes, that would be considered as one XRP. Multiply it with 10, you will get 10 XRP and so on. So let us include one more cool thing, which is memo. So let me show that to you. Memo, mem it's an array by the way. Memo is an array of objects which holds memo, which holds an object once again, which has memo data, which takes a hex encoded string as input. So memo data is nothing but hex encoded string. So let me quickly show you how to get that. So Node.js has a built-in property called buffer. I'll make use of that. From that, let me open up the browser and look for fire emoji or something else you might be interested in. So I'll just use fire emoji inside quotes and let me write my blog's name technotip.com and then convert it to string of type hex and let me uppercase it. That's all. Let me output that onto the console window. Now let me run this and I get the hex code for this string that is fire emoji plus fire emoji space my blocks name nice encoded hex encoded string to be sent in the payload right so just enclose it within the quotes and send it as memo data it's completely optional to have this memo details in your payload I just showed it to you because I thought it's cool and you would love to know about it. So I just showed it to you. So that's it. So let me comment these two lines of code and then check my code once again. Uh, we have enter one XRP as the amount to be paid here. Okay, that's it, I guess. I need to, this 1 million drop means 1 XRP, okay? Let me clear this screen and run this script once again. And then quickly grab this sign in request URL and paste it inside the browser. Remember, we are the initiators and the end user in this case as we are running this code inside my own computer. 
So let me and this link you are seeing here, you could click this link and see the raw format, raw payload here, okay? So let me quickly grab my phone and hold it against the QR code. I have opened the same URL on my desktop computer. Let me click on this scan icon present inside some application and hold it against the QR code, which opens the sign in request information. So look here, we have one XRP filled here, pre filled here, and there is no way to edit it. Okay. So once we authenticate this sign in request, the sign in takes place within a couple of seconds. Okay, the sign in request is successful. Now get back to some developer dashboard. And you could see this in the payload section. Two minutes back, open and sign in request. So destination address, memo, the amount sent, and sign signed hex blob transaction detail, etc. will be present inside your some developer dashboard. So in our next video tutorial, let's see how we can send push notification directly to the end users, some application. So stay tuned, stay subscribed to our YouTube channel.